We just watched Dimitri Andrekin make his way through to the final here at the Rapid Chess Championship Week 15 knockout. Hikaru Nakamura would love to do the same, but in his path is Dropstone DP, David Paravian. And Paravian is one of the most solid players we have in the Rapid Chess Championship. He plays his beloved, oh, it's not going to happen, but after E5, he plays his beloved four knights every single game. And say we have a Karakhan, all pawns, no hope, according to the Queen's Gambit. But according to Hikaru Nakamura, a worthy opening. And what are the themes in this position, especially in the advanced variation of the Karakhan, where white has this pawn structure, d4 and e5, similar to the French defense in the advanced variation, you may want to play c5. Now, there's a big difference. The bishop's out on f5 rather than a home on c8. That sounds good, right? Why would I want my bishop back on c8, staring into all my pieces? But it becomes a bit of a target. So even in the event of c5, cd4, sometimes you just take with a knight on d4, and this bishop on f5 is under threat. So a4 played by Paravin, queenside expansion, maybe he'll play a5. Well, after c5, he needs to look at his center before he touches that a pawn once more. And this often gets explosive with c4. I'm not going to pretend to know the theory. I'm throwing out possibilities here. I think white has a couple moves. He can take on c5. He can also play c4. He can also play c3, I think, which is also a move. But he's thinking for a long time. Let me, move, of course, move the mouse off the board, as always. Oh, wait, I can't listen. What am I doing? i got to take my headphones off. That's right. Thankfully, I remember that. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. As soon as the music started playing, I'm like, as soon as, soon as I started wanting to hum to the rhythm, I realized, like, wait, something's wrong about this. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. So like I said, DC5, C4 seem like the moves. Um, DC5 and C4 seem like the moves. C3 is also a move, I think. Now he's thinking for a long time here. Um, trying to remember how this goes. I had this against somebody not so long ago. I think it was against... Um, who was it against? I don't remember who it was against. Okay, so let's see what he's going to do here. He's thinking for a really long time, which I'm kind of surprised by. He's not a player who usually gets surprised in the openings. Hmm. hmm. Um, what other move candidates come to mind? You could just play bishop e3. You're not super afraid of dropping this pawn in this position because there's often a check on b5, which can be annoying for this king. This knight takes f5 ideas. So bishop e3 is an option as well, but I typically don't like seeing c takes d4 happen and then I can't take back with my pawn. So c3 is a third and maybe the most natural continuation here, just keeping the Pawn chain alive, but Paravi had thinking so much that I figured he was about to play c4. You don't really think forever and then play c3. It's a move you play in two seconds. So he realizes that it's justified, that his center is not just collapsing everywhere, he's not losing a pawn. And now it's Akaru's turn to think. And you see Akaru, he's pondering what's my next move going to be? Not easy. Let me look at this tension. And the question is who wants to release that tension? Who is actually threatened to capture? Uh, is D takes C5 a threat. Is C takes D5 a threat? All CD5 doesn't matter because DC4 happened. And now I'm looking at Knight A3. Knight takes C4, as I mentioned before. That also makes the E5 pawn feel better. It's protected by the Knight coming to C4. And the Knight is looking at the D6 square. So, Aravian thinking, twirling his hair. Typical chess player uh, reaction during the games. But he's trying to figure out what to do going forward. And the best thing about Icar's play this far, moving quickly, playing all these natural moves, and probably, mm, yeah, that's not a move I really like. It's not like his position is bad, but you had to move the same piece a second time. It looked nicer to get the knight involved. And now, after c takes d4 and knight to c6 and things like that, the bishop does get out, and you kind of wish that pawn could go back to a3. The, uh, Chess.com game not allowing me to do that because pawns do not move backwards. And the b4 square could be blacks for the taking. So bishop g4 played. Things are getting spicy here. This d4 pawn might collapse and then e5. 
is going to fall after that. So what can Paravian do? That move bishop g4 wasn't loved by the engine there. Knight takes e5. Is that even a threat? Because knight takes e5 after bishop takes bishop b5. I guess it is a threat technically. What I'm trying to point out is this king is caught in the center. So if I make him like bishop g5, then knight takes e5 ideas won't be a, a threat. So I'm just trying to figure out how quickly this center is about to get collapsed and if it's going to work out for black or if it's a mistake to think you're getting away with all that stuff. So wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, I don't know if it works. I think it does. D5. You can't take on E5 because knight takes E5. And after bishop takes D1, you have bishop B5 check. And this is the problem when your king is in the center like this. Your king is getting caught. So knight C6, I take. And now I'm throwing C7 check. If you have king E7 to avoid all these checks, I take on B7. Now your rook's under attack. Knight C6 is a nasty fork. Your bishop on d1 is loose. White takes all the material on the board and wins this game. So d5 is available right now. If you take on d5 with the pawn, then you play bishop takes d5, and now bishop takes f7 is a serious threat. Again, he's using so much time early that, I mean, I can't flag him, obviously, because there's increment, but if, he, if we have critical moments later in the game, there could be serious issues for my opponent. I mean, I'm already up four minutes. I'm already up basically half the time. So let's see. Four thirty-seven. Okay, so. I mean, objectively, I've won the opening battle, um, unless there's some big tactical line that he comes up with. So he takes on c5, which is what I expected. I mean, I assume I play knight c6 here, but let me think. I mean, it looks right. I hit all the pawns. He's used so much time already in this opening that I think without a doubt, I've, I've definitely won the opening battle. I've won the opening battle. I'm up five minutes on the clock, more or less. So this is a very, not, uh, yeah, five minutes almost on the clock. So... Very, very good start. Whether I'm able to convert or put pressure in the middle game depends, remains to be seen. Although, again, like I said, I'm pretty sure White's still fine with perfect play, but down, you're already down five minutes. You're out of the opening with not the position that you want. That much is for sure. So it's more on me to see whether I can put pressure on him here because this is definitely not what he was aiming for. He's used six minutes, um, six minutes on his first 10 moves. So something has definitely gone wrong. And at some point, probably there's going to come a moment when I need to use my time more precisely. When I when I, like I need to think for two or three minutes and try to find a really good move. There's probably going to be a moment like that later on, is my guess. And it's important because if I if I keep moving too fast trying to flag him, I could make mistakes. So let's see. I mean, he is really, really burning time here. Really burning the time. Not even sure what he's calculating, honestly, because it just... He kind of just has to make moves. Immediately, I see my pawns dropping, so at least I can... Attempt to distract Black's pieces, he says, with no confidence or certainty whatsoever. I just like Black's position right now. And Paravian, I'm sure, is thinking the same. And he's not enjoying what's happening here as he continues to just dip on the clock. He's down under two and a half minutes. I mean, he's got to go. Even if you're not enjoying what you're seeing here, you've got to make a move. And... At this rate, he could get a winning position and not be able to, to win because he doesn't have time. Uh, I see that Paravin's like moving, at least 
his face and his body, but he's not moving over the board. He just breathed a, a big old sigh, like this doesn't look great. He decides on bishop b5, so he's pinning the knights, and that makes perfect sense. Do not, do not take this knight upon e5. You take with the uh, d knight. Maybe I can trade queens just directly, and you have to take with your king there. You take with the c knight, I take back. You take my queen, I take back, and d7 falls. This is one of those illustrations of just because a piece is pinned does not mean it can't, does not mean it shouldn't move. It will move, and you will just lose in the spot. So just to very, very quickly show that, you just lose the game immediately. This is just terrible. You're pinned everywhere. Your king's in trouble. So knight c takes e5 is out of the question in this position. Why would have two minor pieces for the queen? You're getting a third. You're getting an attack. Bye bye. You're lost. So knight takes e5, of course, is not going to be played. I think we'll see a capture on c5, either with the knight or the bishop. And that's what Hikar is thinking about. And he takes the bishop, developing in one turn. And this position is getting annoying for white. The b4 square under black's control, I mentioned that earlier. It is important because a knight can just sit on that square, causing White some issues. How to continue? Knight c3 to e4 is what I mentioned earlier as a plan. The time situation, I'm up so much time. You know, a couple seconds isn't going to kill me here. So it's really, really important that I just don't do anything absolutely insane. So he goes bishop f4, which does give me knight d4 now. Now, this is the question is knight d4 the move or not? Um, can he sack his queen or something? Maybe he can. Maybe he can sack his queen. Maybe that's his idea. If I go knight d4, knight d4, takes, takes. Queen e7, knight e6 I just take, knight f5 I just take, knight six I take, knight b3 I castle on. Knight b3 castle, knight c5, knight c5, bishop d7, rook d7, I'm fine. Knight d4 is a big question mark here. I think it's a good move, but is it the move or not the move is the question. I'm going to play... Ah. I really want to do it. I'm just not sure if it's... Okay, queen e7. I'm going to trust my instinct. I think it's I think it's the correct move. Yeah, let's let's do it. Because now he has to think also about whether he can sack, whether he can take with a knight, which is the other reason I'm playing this. So I think now he has to spend time trying to figure out if he can actually sack his queen. But actually, I also just have a6 as well, so he can't, he can't sack his queen. But you know what? Just because of the time situation, I'll make another safe pre-move with bishop d1. I mean, it's getting so low on time here that it's tough to play. But there is increment. That is the one thing. There is increment here, so it's not... Yeah, he plays knight d2... I mean, I can take the bishop. I mean, I can't really lose this. The only thing is, can I really create winning chances? And it's kind of hard to do that. Um, I mean, I can play a6. Take 6, knight e4, queen d5, knight c5, bishop f3, bishop f3, queen c5, bishop e3, rook d8, rook c1, queen e5. I mean, that's probably good, but... Yeah, that's where I should use my time. Definitely use my time here. This is probably the most important point of the game. Uh, uh, uh. Knight b5 is fine, but can I can I really get winning chances? That's basically what I'm thinking. I'm thinking in this, this position, where are the possibilities to get winning chances? What's the right structure for any chances to win? I mean, that's, that's really all that I'm thinking about here. Because I know I'm completely fine. It's just a matter of trying to find a way to Get the imbalance where with a one minute he can't play it precisely to save the draw. Here, this knight is free to go, and d6 square is available to hop into next. So, Car is thinking, do I want that bishop? Do I want the knight on f3? Um, should I castle now? What to do? It's not easy to figure out. So, he takes on b5. Okay, so Paravian can play knight e4 here. He does. Somehow, I, I like Paravian's position. Not that he's really better, but it doesn't feel like he's worse. Okay, so what's the idea? This queen is a little bit tied down to the defense of this knight. I mentioned it's not the end of the world to have double pawns on the f-file, but he'd preferably not have double pawns, right? 
Pravian. It was queen e2 after a bit of a think. And he wants a rook to d1. And he can put a rook on d1 if he wants. So that knight's coming to d5. That's a great square for the knight. But then there's knight c3, except there isn't because the knight takes f4. So it's something to keep in mind. Again, pin pieces can still move. So if rook to f1, d1, knight d5, knight c3, yay, I'm going after your pin piece. You can play knight takes f4 here. And I guess white somehow has a move like queen e4 or something, or queen e3. Queen three doesn't work. Knight d five. You have to play queen like c four, queen e four, something like that. But if you take the queen, the knight takes c two is check, and then you lose your rook at the end and you lose the game. So pinned pieces can still move. Everybody, don't forget that. Knight g three, queen d five by Hikaru. He wants bishop takes f three, shattering the structure. And also, if the queen takes b five, might be hanging. But b seven is hanging. Return sixteen seconds for Paravian. He's way, way, way too low on the clock. He takes the pawn because the capture the queen looked like. A promising position for black now after queen to b3 that knight can go back it's gone to e4 a bunch of times the bishop can slide back to g3 after knight to d5 so e5 is safe b5 is safe that's good news for Paravin. bishop back to g3 i'm gonna go here i guess yeah logical now the thing is i can play queen c4 here this is actually i think a very so the, the bishop on g3 is so bad that you know what? I'm just going to do it. If his bishop on g3 wasn't so bad, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play it like this. But bad bishop, tough position to play. Three seconds on the clock. This bishop on g3 is really, really dead here. So now I want to decide that my name is Jose Araul Capablanca. And I want to find a way to put this bishop to sleep for the rest of the game. That's what I want to figure out. So I can play knight c3, h5. I don't really want to do that. I mean, he's got four seconds, too. I mean, I really do need to keep that in mind. So I don't need to be a Jose Raul, but I want to be a Jose Raul. So if I want to be like Jose, um, what's the move here? Knight b6 is kind of cheeky. And I have a lot of time to kind of chill, so I'm going to be cheeky. Let's go here. This creates a lift, by the way, for the... Uh, for all my pieces as well so do i go h4 or not it's a move bishop b4 is also very strong i think because now i have the luft for the king do i play h4 or not also a big question mark which i feel like i misplayed this slightly although maybe it's still good i guess i huh that's not good for Paravin. His time management has not been good at all. 3.8 seconds left to 4 minutes, 10 seconds for Hikaru. So Hikaru should be getting this one. And it was very important to create luck for this king. So there's never any kind of distracting this rook from the back rank. None of that stuff is available. And Hikaru thinking here. He's probably also thinking about bishop takes c3. Because this knight can venture right back to d5. Looks very promising. So h4, I'm just not sure about this pawn sticking out over here. And king h7, that apparently was a mistake. Knight a4, if you take rook takes, there's some kind of annoying pin over here. And this rook needs to stay protecting a7. So really interesting choice. Knight d5, there's rook takes d5. That tactic is available because of knight b6. Uh, But it's bad. It's rook c2, bishop c5. Nicely done by Hikaru. Rook b4 coming, hitting all these pawns. And the, this bishop is going to sit on g1. Congratulations. You uh, have been the first person to put a pawn on the first rank. So this bishop doing a very sad duty here. And it's mop-up duty on the other side of things. So he takes here. Rook d7, f4. Go, f4. Think about f5. Okay, well now I know f4 for you. Bishop back. You can play bishop d4 to go after the pawn e5, and f4 is available. The problem for black is the king needs to stay protecting this pawn. So just moving his pawn off the board here. d3, why not? Keep pushing. I mean, this is such a bad piece. It is really hard to look at this bishop on g1 and still consider it a bishop. Two seconds. King e4 played. f5 check. Oh, speaking of f5 check, but that was a mistake. It was somehow a mistake. 
Because there's gonna be F. Oh my gosh, there was after. Wait, that was a big blunder. So they're blundering or making mistakes back and forth. But Rook B5, but three seconds left. Nicely done by Hikaru. This bishop's in trouble. The bishop goes to H2, down goes this pawn on F2. Rook C5, Rook E1 check, even better. Wait, was there bishop takes F2 there? Well, now there's definitely bishop takes F2 or Rook E1, but Rook E1, Rook D1 even better. The pawn is defended and you can promote and then bring your rook back to H1 and win H3. This is not going to keep my bishop. Just great play by a car here. Yep. There we go. We got the win. Excellente. And Peravian had one chance because Hikaru was playing quickly. He was, of course, trying to find the optimal moves, but he was playing in no small part due to Peravian's time. So F5 check played by Hikaru. Instead of F5, uh, Black could have started with Rook B1. F5 check does look scary, so I understand why Hikaru didn't want to allow it, but the king could just drop back to H7. And after that, the same idea happens with B2, and you're going to go promote. And actually, I can show a fun line here, where if bishop uh, h2 to save the bishop, after b2, king f3, it looks like you're saving everything. I was wondering if bishop takes f2 was possible in these positions, and apparently not, because after here, rook h1, oh my gosh, there's bishop g1. Oh, that silly bishop actually saves the day. But I was thinking, oh, just typical. You take my pawn, I take your bishop, it's a skewer, or I threaten to promote bishop g1 was there for white. But uh, I guess... Uh, this position instead just bishop d4 like in the game and you move the rook and you go promote so that was available but after f5 check after takes takes the move f5 for white was needed and the reason why is bishop h2 bishop e5 becomes a threat and if you play rook to b1 like happened in the game here comes this check and this pawn is being hunted from behind so one last opportunity from Peravian. he didn't have time to calculate things a uh, fair result i would say when all is said and done because the car just played quickly confidently and well and he moves on to the final excellent i don't think my technique was great but i think it was always kind of unpleasant so we got the win um another important win there so we do move into the finals where we'll play against Dimitri Andrekin for, I think, a second week in a row. 